Hey guys, it's Mitch and Nicole here, back with our weekly tech tip. This week, we have a really special treat for you guys. We're gonna be doing an interview with Austin Evans to see what he's been up to since the last time we worked together. So let's jump into it. Hey folks, it's Nicole here from the 45 Drives Marketing Department. Really excited to be part of this video today with Austin Evans and uh, catch up with him after we first worked with him about four or five years ago with Linus. So I just wanted to have a quick conversation with him and see how his storage server was running and just catch up on uh, what he's been up to. Hey guys, this is Austin and this is the 250 terabyte project. Now this has been one of the biggest things that we've ever undertaken as we literally started working on this last year and we've literally been shooting this video ever since. This entire project was really built around these two units from 45 Drive. Hello, hello. Hey. hey. Awesome. So yeah, we have some planned questions that we have for you, but I kind of wanted to start first as like the resident uh, tech YouTuber lover here and just ask you uh, a question that I had for you. Um, maybe a bit of a blast from the past, from about five years ago when you uh, did Scrapyard Wars. Curious, are you still a little salty from Linus beating you? <laughs> no, I didn't deserve to win that. Are you kidding me? I had two power supplies on my stupid case. Like, I bought that card from that sketchy dude on Craigslist. Like, no, there was no scenario in which I should have won that season. Uh, the fact that I even was... Uh... <laughs> The fact that it even had a completed build at the end of it, I feel very proud about. I was way in over my head. They were so, like, the thing is that Scrapyard Wars at that point, Linus and Luke, they were so, like, tuned in. Like, I don't know what, uh, I don't know what season it was, but they had already done a few of them. So they knew exactly where to go. They knew what kind of parts they could get for cheap. Like, they were, like, tuned in. I'm just like, uh, the new guy Canadian rupees. In. I don't know what to do with these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're uh, much more familiar with the area too, so it's kind of a handicap there, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was great though. It was great. Like, I love those guys. I can't believe you're right. That was five years ago. That's nuts. Yeah, nuts. yeah, five years ago. Crazy. Pretty wild. I know. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, for, for the first question, um, I heard some stories about your, your previous workflow and kind of how you guys did things. Uh, what was the main thing that made you want to change your workflow to like a big storage server? Yeah, so we've had, well, so things have evolved. So just to kind of give a little bit of context, and I have a very squeaky chair, apologies. Um, so when I first started, it was just me. So I just edited off of, you know, the drive on like my laptop or my desktop, or eventually I started uh, evolving to like those like Samsung SSDs, like the, the T1 and T3s and whatnot. And those worked pretty well for me when it was just by myself. And then specifically when we started expanding the team and started actually building the, the edit team, um, we still actually for a little while used those like Samsung drives because essentially we would have, you know, I don't know, a dozen of the drives. We'd have like a board to kind of like go like, you know, this is A, B, C. This has, you know, X project on it who, you know, it's assigned to this person. Like it worked, but then we had no redundancy. If any of those drives failed, if someone lost it, whatever the case is, if they got, we had actually, I remember we had one where the drive was just straight up died in the middle of the project. And we were like, oh, cool. Hopefully we can find that footage. So that was kind of where we were, you know, circa a few years ago. And so when, I guess it was Linus who kind of first reached out and actually made the introduction uh, between us and sort of, we built the Dunkinator for the first time. The idea with that one was at first we're like, oh, you know what? We want to use this as our editing server, right? We want to have everything on here. But we quickly realized that as the team started to expand, it just wasn't enough for everyone to b jump on. And at that point, we didn't even have 10 gig in the office at all. I think we had a single like switch that had like two 10 gig ports. So for quite a while, that was kind of like our archive server. That's where we dumped all of those T1s and T3s and stuff to once we were actually done. But then when we actually started working together with the Stornado, that was when things really kind of like stepped up a notch. So nowadays, obviously, the world is a little bit of a different place, so not everyone's actually in the office, you know, dumping footage and everything to, uh, or editing directly off of it since so many people are remote at the moment. 
But once we got that up and running, it made a huge difference in actually allowing us to be able to have everyone on the exact same share, everyone being able to run over 10 gig, sharing like files and stuff. And even like going between edits was completely transformed by the idea of not tossing those stupid Samsung Drives SSDs around. back and forth all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always so worried about anything going wrong with those. And thankfully, over the years we used them, we didn't lose a lot, but we lost, I remember, at least one project. And one project is way too mean to lose ever, like if you could yeah, possibly yeah, avoid, it. avoid it. Yeah. Awesome. So that is your current still workflow. So you guys are doing like live editing off the Stornado and then maybe like long term archive projects are going batched off to the, uh, the Stornado. Exactly. Exactly. So what we've done is so we've been uh, edit team has been remote for most of this year. So what we've done is when people are in the office, we are able to edit live. And then other than that, we have the remote share set up so people can use it to kind of like cycle footage back and forth, either where they're the finished edits or downloading the footage. And then we have a dumping station that's connected via 10 gig in the office where anytime we're done shooting stuff, we use that to dump it to the Stornator or sorry, the store the Stornado. <laughs> yeah, I, keep, I gotta keep my branding right, um, and then everyone can kind of move thing fi uh, files around as they need to from there. Nice, nice. Is that working for you? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's actually been good. So like. When we were first talking about it and trying to spec it out, I didn't have a great sense for how much space we would need, right? Because previously we had something in the neighborhood of like 20-ish, maybe a little over that, uh, and terabytes of those T3s and T5s and stuff. But the problem was, was that obviously each one of those drives was kind of dedicated to one project. So when we have these two terabyte drives, some of those projects may, I mean, we certainly work with some big red files and whatnot sometimes, and you know, we can have projects that approach a terabyte or more, but we also had a lot of those drives with, you know, 100 gigs on them. So it was kind of hard for us to get our head around that. But we've actually had no problems, even when we've had sort of like delays with sort of like people not being in the office for a little bit or trying to like back stuff up and like kind of get moved over to like LTO is sort of like our long term option or whatnot. We've actually never had an issue where we've even been close to uh, being sort of out of storage, which has been really nice because I was really concerned like, oh, 20 terabytes, 30 terabytes, 40 terabytes. But it's actually all worked out really well. Ah, that's awesome. Um, I got one question. Actually, I heard you mention LTOs. So uh, going back to maybe a, a less happy time with the fire with you guys that you guys have, where you lost like everything. Um, have you changed up the way that you do things for like long term backups since then? So I imagine like you have your your storage on the Stornado Stornator. Do you use cloud as well or just kind of tape drive to a secondary location? That's exactly it. Tape drive. Yeah. So during the fire, I had uh, I had backups and they were all on site, so okay, yeah. that, that didn't work out that too well. Out. That didn't uh, work too well. <laughs> no, no, not not the greatest. So yeah, so our solution right now is exactly as you described. So basically, uh, the flow is everything as it's ingested, it hits the Stornado. Um, it is edited off of that. It is you know pulled down by the editors, but everything sort of ends up on that server on one way or another. From there, then it goes to medium-term storage, which is certainly the Stornator, or the Dunkinator, as we call it. And, and, and that's where we sort of keep all of, well, all of the footage for the first like year or so. And then long-term beyond that, we keep all of like the main stuff. So like the raw footage ends up getting uh, bounced out, but all that has all of our like, you know, uh, completed projects, a lot of our B-roll, a lot of the stuff that we know we're going to want to access. Um, but then after we burn a tape every like month or so, we keep everything, everything on LTO. So that's where we have a couple of copies. So we have, uh, I don't even know how many LTO tapes we're up to at this point. We've got, I don't know, probably a couple dozen at this point, but we have uh, copies of those there. We have them off site. So generally speaking, the worst case we have is maybe a month of data that we may, we may lose if the office disappears tomorrow. At least we kind of keep those tapes constantly being kind of burning every, every few weeks to a month or so. Nice, nice. I have a question about your the OS that you're using. Are you still running Unraid on your on your Storinator? I think it was on your Storinator, and then you were you running FreeNAS on your Storinator. Yes. So we actually once we got the Storinator up and running, we actually synced them both up on FreeNAS. So I'm actually not entirely sure where we're going to land long term on them because we're currently in the middle of. So we edit on Mac uh, here at the office, so we're all Final Cut. Um, and we have some intermittent issues with the way that FreeNAS sort of interfaces, specifically with Final Cut, with the way that it saves the files. And it gets a little, like Final Cut gets a little uh, uh, finicky sometimes. With the, yeah, exactly. So 
I'm not 100% sure where we're going to land long term, but right now we are using free NAS both on the Stornado and the Stornator. Oh, nice. oh interesting. Cool, cool. cool. In, in, uh, you may you kind of indirectly talked about it, but just about your redundancy settings in your array. What What is your, your RAID configuration? Are you doing RAID 5, 6? So I actually don't know that off the top of my head. Yeah. So we have, uh, so Wes who works here, he's the one who kind of like does everything like sort of like on a day-to-day -day basis as far as managing all the data, burning all the tapes and stuff. I know that we have somewhere in the neighborhood of, oh God, I think it's like, to drive redundancy, I believe. I would have to check. I probably, yeah. I yeah, probably so should know that off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. Raid, Raid Z2 is what ZFS and, and FreeNAS. Yes, it is absolutely ZFS. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, so yeah, for, for your editors, how many editors are typically like editing? I know you guys are working from home now, so it's not quite the same, but when you were all working in the same office, uh, how many people would hit that for like a full 10 gig pipe at, at, a, at the same time? So usually it would max out at two in any kind of normal circumstance. Um, for really crazy days, sometimes we would have three people hitting it all at the same time. But the thing is, so we work with a pretty wide variety of formats here based on which channel we're doing, which camera and everything. So we do everything from you know 8K or typically we shoot 7K um, red raw footage. Um, but the majority of what we shoot is ProRes. So we shoot a lot of 4K, 422 ProRes. And I'd say 70% of the cameras here shoot that based on sort of what we're doing. But the thing is, oftentimes we're shooting in multicam, right? So an average, you know, main channel video is three streams of 4K ProRes 422, which I don't know the data rate off the top of my head, but I know that that's in the mid hundred megabyte per second. I think it's five, 600 uh, megabytes a second, um, which is honestly totally fine. Even when we have multiple editors pulling that, I don't think we've ever... Oh God, I, I've never seen us actually completely saturate the 10 gig. I've never seen that. I know that we've come somewhat close, but the thing is it's really rare for everyone to be at 100% capacity at all times at the exact, yeah. like yeah. it just, yeah. it, no, never right. it never happens. It so yeah. thankfully we've never had that problem. Um, as we scale, that may be a problem at some point, but then I think as we're scaling these days, it's not so much everyone being in the office, it's much more so kind of being spread out anyway. So a lot of that's just more of like, hey, all the editors want faster internet and I can't download my footage fast enough. That's always the bottleneck these <laughs> yeah, days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I had a few more questions, but you ended up like really answering them in <laughs> the answers of other questions. You're really, really detailed, so that was awesome. Um, I don't know, do you want to have, ask that last question? I think he even answered that in his, uh, Questions oh, about it the was literally, I just want to ask you about the Duncanator and if it still existed, but or if the name still existed, but yeah, yeah, obviously it it, 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 it does. It, look, yeah. look, so here's the thing. The spirit? So, <laughs> we, uh, so when we built the server rack, uh, oh God, what was that, a year and a half, two years ago, whenever we actually started working on that project when it came time for this tornado and sort of we really wanted to kind of build it all out, that's when we went to LTO. Um, Wes, who was doing all the work on that, he decided to name all the uh, all of our various units um, names that I'm like canoe and Zeppelin and Starship, which was kind of in order of how fast the storage solution was. Oh, God. Look, there's nothing wrong with that. It's always going to be the Duncanator in my heart, though. Ah, so it's there in spirit. That, it's that's absolutely amazing. there in spirit. There's a little sticker on the side of it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much all the questions I have. I did have one little thing, that uh, a proposition that I have for you. Yeah. Um, I feel really lucky uh, here working at 45 Drives. I get to go in the lab and play with all kinds of really powerful hardware, really cool storage servers, but you get to play with some of the really cool stuff, like the new <laughs> Xbox and PlayStation 5, 3080, probably a 3090, and even a 3070 today. So. Uh, maybe off camera we can talk about switching some out a little there bit. I'll send you something, you send me something. I'll trade you an Xbox for a server. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thank you so much for doing this and taking yeah. the time to speak with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I know that sort of we've done a lot of stuff over the years, and I know that you guys are always cooking up cool new stuff in the lab, so I can't wait to see what you guys have next. next. Yeah, yeah, great, and hopefully we'll work on something again soon. Love it. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> See you now. Thanks, Austin. All right. Bye. All right, guys, thanks for watching our weekly tech tip. It was really cool to check in with Austin Evans and see how his storage server has been running since the last time we talked to him. So if you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down below, and we'll see you on the next week's tech tip.